Many thanks, Kunle Adeyeye, for that uh, background. Uh, with us in the studios now to discuss the issues in further detail, let's welcome the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Ono. Honorable Minister, pleasure to have you on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you so much. Okay. Also here with us in the studios, we would like to welcome the Director General of the Energy Commission of Nigeria, Engineer uh, Eli Jideri Bala. Uh, Engineer Bala, pleasure to have you with us uh, Thank today on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, King. Okay. And uh, joining us via Skype uh, from Lagos is the Director General of the Nigeria Natural Medicine Development Agency, uh, Samuel Ogene Etatuvie. So it's a pleasure to welcome you to the program this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. We have a clear signal. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Kirian. But we we'll have to start a conversation in our studios with the Honorable Minister of, of Science and Tech. Uh, it's been a while since we uh, last had you on Good Morning Nigeria, and we know that you've been busy. But take us back to 2015 and right up to this moment. What have been the milestones in uh, science and tech in Nigeria? Yes, uh, we, uh, in 2015, uh, when I came in as uh, a Minister of Science and Technology, uh, it was very clear uh, to me uh, that uh, Nigeria must pay more attention uh, to uh, science and technology because uh, all through history, uh, people think it's just maybe because of uh, COVID-19 or even uh, modern history, but all through history, since the history of man was recorded, no nation has ever become truly great without uh, science, technology, and innovation. A nation can be wealthy, uh, but not great. And uh, in most cases, uh, such nations lose such wealth. But once it is on the basis of science and technology, you will find that it's sustainable. So we've, uh, we've done a lot uh, since 2015. Uh, the first is that we have tried to sensitize our people, Nigerians, to uh, appreciate uh, the importance and the relevance of science, technology, and innovation to nation building. And we're very happy that uh, you know, we've gotten uh, good results in that. And uh, besides general uh, uh, mobilization, we have targeted the young people. Uh, in the intro, uh, we have a program whereby we go to all the 774 local government areas and try to promote science and the technology by identifying those who in future will be notable scientists. Uh, what that means is that in every local government area, we now organize, uh, it's done by the local government. Uh, they will organize tests in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry and biology, and they select the best. Now you move to the state level, where the best from the local government areas will come and compete on the same uh, you know, subject areas. And then you bring the best. Now the best from all the states and the FCT will come uh, to Abuja, where we pick the best three. And so far, Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari has been so gracious. Yeah, he's uh, giving scholarship awards to the first three uh, to study up to PhD level in uh, any Nigerian university in any science related uh, uh, discipline. We've also looked at gender balancing. We want our girl child to be interested in uh, science and technology. Uh, we've taken this up, we've visited schools, uh, girl schools, we've engaged uh, uh, professionals, uh, our very reputable uh, women in science and technology. Some are vice chancellors, many are professionals like medical doctors, engineers, and, and we've engaged them to go around, particularly the rural areas, to talk in our schools, to encourage our uh, girl child to show interest in science and technology. And uh, we are very happy with that. Then also, we, uh, wherever I have gone to, I've visited traditional rulers uh, because they are very important. They live with the people, and in many cases, people respect them. And we say, please, use your office and explain to our people 
uh, within your own area of jurisdiction, the importance of science and technology. So that mobilization, I believe, is the most important because once uh, the nation uh, sees that relevance, uh, it's, 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 uh, and, I, I, and it's working, it's been very helpful. Uh, it will lead us to becoming the truly great nation that Nigeria must be. Uh, also, we have done a number of things. Uh, before 2015, uh, we have 17 agencies uh, that we supervise. We find that uh, all the research findings uh, are used more for career advancement. And we said, no, you know, this is good. You know, it's just like in the universities, you either publish or you perish. So we want that. We want you to uh, be very creative, be very inventive, uh, publish. But all research findings that you believe can become products and also even services, you know, we must make sure that we commercialize uh, such research uh, findings so that we can now have these products in the marketplace. Because that is the time when Nigerians go into the market and they find that, yes, gradually, many of the things that we import are being replaced by the things that are produced locally. They will now start seeing more the relevance of uh, science, technology, and innovation to their own daily living. And uh, this has been very successful. Uh, the area of uh, commercialization. We now have uh, a number of industries you know, scattered around the country that started very small. Uh, they have now grown you know, from micro uh, through being so, uh, small to medium uh, enterprises. And we believe that in future they will get to large enterprises. And uh, this is very, very important. Then also we looked at uh, areas that are of great importance to the nation. For example, Nigeria with a population of 200 million people plus, we must feed ourselves. It's very important that we must feed ourselves. So we must do everything to make sure that all that food we, we used to import from outside, we can grow them, we can uh, process them, uh, I just uh, saw, uh, maybe not in the intro, but before the intro, the losses, uh, harvest yeah, losses like that we have. Yes, you know, and the, many people don't know that uh, agriculture is essentially 90% science and technology. They think it's just the tractors, they see that, you know, prepare the land. No. Or the harvesters that harvest, you know, no. Even from the seed. I can give you a classical example. Nigeria used to be uh, a major uh, grower of cotton. I used to export cotton from Nigeria, but after some time, the bollworm attacks our cotton fields. And you know, the farmers are smart. Uh, if the bollworms attack the cotton fields and they start uh, losing revenue, they will move to other crops. So, but using science and technology, one of our agencies, NABDA, working with uh, uh, some other agencies, we're able now to uh, find a seed that is resistant to the bollworm and also has bigger yield. So what has this done? This has now reactivated you know, the, uh, the cotton industry. Uh, you see the central bank is investing. Yeah, it's, you know, because we were able to do that research. If you go to Gombe now, you see many cotton fields. And this is springing up everywhere, uh, particularly in the northern part of the country, you know, the cotton uh, belt of the nation. So that will show you uh, the relevance of science, technology, and innovation, you know, to agriculture. And uh, even in this... Uh, uh, post-harvest losses. You know, if we can minimize the losses uh, in uh, our harvest, then it will help us tremendously. And it is science and technology that will do this because you have to now develop the technology. There are two components. One is to develop the, the technology that will help you to process the food so that, uh, you know, that you harvest, you know, convert it to the form that it will be needed uh, and used, you know, uh, when off season, because there are so many fruits, uh, but they have got uh, 
planned it that there is a particular season for it. But, you know, you need it because they give you nutrients in the body and they, you want to have it all year round. So it is only through that uh, type of, uh, you know, technology that you can make it available. We are doing that. Then also we are working on the machines. You need the machines that will help you to process this, you know, in a very large uh, quantities. So agriculture is an area that is of very great importance. I mean, Mr. President is so interested. He has uh, committed the resources there, and we are helping to make sure we get that. Then also in manufacturing, we can continue to be importing many of the things uh, we need into the country. We have seen that that has created tremendous problems for us. First is even the unemployment. Because if you keep importing these things into the country, you are exporting jobs that you can have here. And you are weakening our currency because the pressure on the Naira will be so intense. And when that pressure comes, you know, what else you do? You devalue the Naira. And that's why we have been, you know, our Naira has been becoming weaker and weaker. So we are also working, you know, to make sure that we can produce many of the things that we now import into the country so that it can be produced here, you know, manufactured here in the country. So you can see. Now, in the area of health, you know, we uh, take, for example, there are certain diseases that are peculiar to people who have the same color of skin, uh, black skin, you know, with us. Look at sickle cell anemia. Uh, it's very peculiar to black people. And we don't expect that Europeans will spend their money to go and do research and find drugs. You know, they may do so anyway for commercial purposes, but we as we should give leadership to the black people in the world. Just because God concentrated more black people in Nigeria. There is no other nation in the world that has, you know, the concentration of black people as we do. So we have we are committed that such diseases, you know, we are doing intensive research and we are getting good results. You know, we now have a supplement, you know, one of our agencies in Lagos uh, has a supplement that you add to food and the, right now is uh, being uh, commercialized by one of our big, uh, you know, food uh, companies. So uh, these are the things that we're doing. Then also, uh, uh, even in the area of uh, cancer, uh, the, uh, the, the DG in natural medicine, maybe he can mention, but we felt that we should allow, you know, trials, you know, to take place, clinical trials, before we can make such announcement. But we're getting encouraging results in fighting, uh, you know, cancers that, you know, uh, uh, have been uh, responsible for more deaths, both, you know, for uh, female and the male, you know, that is women and, uh, and men in the country. So that is the area of, um, uh, of, of health. Now, even in sports, you know, we are producing f football, you know, that is uh, international standard, that is cheaper. Our, one of our agencies in Zaria is doing so. So you can see that in all areas, all sectors, you know, we have uh, been targeting national priorities, you know, to make sure that we directly affect, you know, the lives and the uh, standard of living of our people. All right, Honorable Minister, let, let me take you back to the issue of commercialization. Um, you, you started a... Uh, Techno Expo in, in this country, uh, where uh, persons who are science inclined, uh, you know, come to uh, display what they have uh, put together. Uh, you have uh, several agencies who, are, who also be uh, have been part of that uh, expo for some time now. But my question is, in those uh, expositions, we have seen tremendous work put in by scientists and technologies in terms of, uh, you know, uh, machinery production, in terms of uh, other chemical uh, uh, science that are displayed, uh, people uh, uh, make uh, dung, so animal, uh, cow dung to, to become uh, 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 metal or ethanol and, and what have you. Now, talking about commercialization, to what extent has uh, some of these uh, been commercialized? Uh, because uh, when there is the will to commercialize, then you see the, the, the big names uh, big industries come in to buy into the research resource that we have in all the research agencies in this country. Are, are we having a kind of a push from the angle of government to encourage those uh, 
uh, rich organizations to, to buy into this commercialization, uh, to be able to en engage in mass production of some of these items we see Nigerians display uh, during uh, uh, science expositions. Oh, yes, uh, you know, may maybe I can also just mention that the expo that you've talked about, which we have done annually uh, since uh, 2016, as soon as I came in as uh, Minister of Science and Technology, uh, is not just for our own agencies, you know, it's for all research uh, institutes and agencies in the country, all our universities, whether public or private universities, uh, federal or state uh, universities, or even faith-based uh, universities, I'm sure if you move around. And you see even secondary schools, secondary schools, very interesting, you know, and they, uh, I'm happy you talked about it. Let me just give you one uh, example. In the, not this last one, about three years ago, uh, the expo that was held here at Ego Square uh, in Abuja, I was just in the Proda stand when a man came in. And he said, look, oh, he was just about traveling to, I think, to Thailand, you know, to go and buy the equipment that he saw that uh, Proda uh, displayed. I was right there, you know, while the man was saying that. So I was so happy. I said, okay, fine, you know, this uh, Proda, you, you know, so we have, uh, in terms of, for example, you know, those uh, high nutrient uh, biscuits. Though when people talk about biscuits, they say, I oh, know, but it's important because this is a very special a uh, form of biscuit that uh, can help children uh, who are suffering from malnutrition recover very quickly. You know, you know uh, Nasco Foods uh, is one of our largest uh, confectionery uh, industries. You know, they are the people that uh, produce, is, is in the market, uh, is in the market already. Uh, we have cases like that, but I must say that there is a drawback uh, in our nation. You know, um, uh, in the developed countries, you have venture capitalists because it is not our duty to do this research and also do the commercialization. I've told our agencies, uh, you know, we will not support that. We should continue to do research because if you allow them to do both, they will forget research. And then after some time, you know, everything will dry up. You know, so our intention is this must be private sector driven. You know, we are doing this, we get these uh, research findings, then we bring in our investors, and we prefer Nigerian investors. Because if Nigerian investors come, you know, we can be sure that whatever profit they make, they will keep the money in our banks, and then the banks can loan this money to our people. That's how the economy grows. And then they can hire our people, they will recruit our people, that's how job creation is. They will pay tax. You know, to both state and federal government, that's how government will be able to build roads and other infrastructure. So we want that, but we are, there is that constraint. You know, we don't have these venture capitalists. Uh, it's a major, major uh, constraint, you know, we have. And that was why at some time we were thinking of establishing a science and technology uh, bank, you know, because we felt that if we have a lot of money put in a specialized bank like that, you can now give credit, you know, to uh, investors, you know, instead of going into the market, 20%, 30% interest, they can get at 5% or so. That may be an incentive because in the end, the nation benefits more because as these enterprises grow, uh, even the taxes they will pay and things of that nature, you know, uh, will, 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 government will, be, uh, will make more money from those. You know, Honorable Minister, thank you very much. I, I mean, uh, good to think now you are sketching some of the challenges. Uh, the picture you painted earlier was pretty rosy, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, but part of the challenge, uh, Kiri, the Honorable Minister has mentioned now, still in the case that uh, the shallow mentality perhaps is persistent. So we'll give you an opportunity to respond to matters arising therefrom. Uh, particularly with regard to what you just said, that fine, uh, research findings are coming out, but you don't have venture capitalists to take up the research findings. So what is the linkage, therefore, between the financial sector and the research sector, rather than you having your own bank in the first instance? Mm -hmm. And you also did something when we had you a couple of years ago in Woodmore, Nigeria. You, you were upbeat about the establishment of the Science, Technology and Innovation Council, which had been uh, on the drawing board for over 30 years. 
So the question will therefore arise, what exactly is the council doing? If it cannot then uh, overreach you know, any of the barriers and say, look, uh, let's get this to drive aspects of financing for venture capitalists. Yeah, uh, the, let me also mention, you see, like I said, uh, our intention is that our research should be industry driven. Uh, it must, our research must meet the needs of society. And we believe that, for example, if uh, our industries have certain needs and our research meet those needs, they will be more willing to come in. And uh, our interest is that the private sector you know, should come in and, and then uh, uh, commercialize uh, all the research findings we have made. Uh, but we are not, just because we don't have, you know, the, the trend in the country uh, for a very long time, you know, has been more of uh, having a trading mentality. You know, you go in, you buy something, you make profit. And so it, it, uh, investing in um, uh, technology, in manufacturing, these are things that take very long uh, period of time. You know, you can take uh, a technology in the process of commercializing it. Uh, it may not turn out the way you, you know, for example, uh, if you take about 10 uh, technologies, those venture capitalists, they believe that if about half of it, uh, say half of the number, five success, they will, you know, do a lot. Because even one can pay for nine that failed. Uh -huh. Not all of them will succeed anyway. You know, so, but it's, it's something that we believe will take time. And that's why in the interim we were thinking of, you know, that, uh, you know, that bank in the interim. But ideally, if you have uh, venture capitalists, then they will come. The financial uh, sector, you know, will back them up and, you know, uh, uh, they can commercialize uh, research findings, you know, very, very uh, uh, easily. But the council, uh, like last time I came, and we must give credit to Mr. President, uh, this is a council that was set up in 1986. Um, you know, the uh, it, it science, technology, and innovation policy was set up in 1986, and they approved 1986, and the council is the lead organ that will uh, implement it. But for 30 years, there was no such, uh, you know, uh, council. So uh, if you don't have a head, you know, the body cannot function. So I, I try to show that that may have been one reason. Uh, that uh, we didn't get the full benefits that we should have from uh, science and technology. But luckily, Mr. President, uh, on 7th of January 2016, exactly 30 years, you know, that council met for the first time because the president is the chairman. So we have been meeting, uh, though uh, Mr. President asked the, uh, Mr. Vice President to sit in for him, which is uh, the same thing, uh, we've been meeting and we've made uh, some progress. But, uh, but you know, uh, the, this administration came at a time, let's not forget it, when the indices, uh, our economic indices were already, you know, going down. We came in, uh, entered into a recession, we just came out of a recession and look at this, uh, uh, you know, COVID-19. So it, it, you, you, the, the resources that would have been uh, deployed, you know, to uh, assist, you know, science and technology, I believe, you know, um, it was not easy because of the situation, because I know the pres Mr. President is very interested. Uh, he would have done it very easily if it is not the circumstances, you know, that uh, we found ourselves. So, but we, we still believe that uh, we, we are now uh, doing our commercialization, you know, at a different level. Uh, what is that level? That level is all these, uh, we have these 17 research centers. There is one of them, the National Board for Technology Incubation. Maybe uh, you may not have invited the DG here. We will bring him maybe next time. You know, that uh, agency is set up to receive all these uh, technologies. And then people come in. And you can't believe people have reti retired soldiers, colonels, you know, uh, the retired you know, SSG, high, highly placed uh, civil servants, you know, well-trained people, some professors and all that who have retired. They come in, take up these technologies, and then they start small and they are moving. So that is the level we are. And the, the benefits will be seen in future. 
I am very confident in 10, 20 years to come, you are going to see uh, these uh, companies that have started very small growing into bigger you, companies. You know, Arabam, you have the benefit of explaining mm -hmm. to us, you know, how this incubation this center will, works, yeah. so that if there are others who are interested, they might uh, take advantage yeah, of it. Yes, I, yeah. actually, the, the, the MBTI DG, I think once in a while, uh, I think sometime last year, uh, was not um, given a general return on, on weekend file, you know, where he elaborated on uh, some of the activities of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the incubation centers, you know, uh, in parts of, of, of the country. And I've been privileged, actually, you know, to um, cover some of these centers like the one in, 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 in Mina, uh, in, in Kano, uh, in Newi, and then Oka and several other centers, you know, they're, they're doing Saturday pretty well. Yes, yes they're doing pretty well in terms of, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing some, some machinery, uh, some uh, scientific uh, products uh, as well, uh, as Minister mentioned. But apparently, let us come to Engineer Eli Chidere Bala, uh, the DG of uh, Energy Commission. Uh, to what extent has the uh, Energy Commission of Nigeria uh, fulfilled its mandate? I'd like you to begin by letting us know exactly the, uh, the, the scope of operation of Energy Commission of Nigeria and uh, what is expected of, of that commission and what has happened within the, uh, in the commission uh, during your tenure, uh, perhaps from 2015. To, to today. So let us know what uh, the current administration has injected into uh, Energy Commission and how you have been able to, uh, you know, handle that. Thank you, uh, Kirian. Energy Commission of Nigeria uh, is one of the parastatals supervised by the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology uh, and with uh, Dr. Obone Ono as the Honorable Minister. We, the commission was established uh, in 1979 by an edict, but then 10 years later I started operation. That was in 1989. Uh, and it started operations after the heads of states of ECOWAS met in Cotonou in 1985 and took decisions after having analyzed the importance of energy within the sub-region to its development that each member state should establish a government, or a government agency uh, to be known as the State Energy Commission uh, to coordinate and plan for the development of the energy resources within its own state. Uh, and uh, so far, Nigeria first started, established the Energy Commission uh, by operationalizing it in 1989, then Ghana followed in 1997. And the primary mandate of the commission as established, as stipulated in the law, now under Energy Commission Act E10, and laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, with the primary responsibility for strategic planning and coordination of national policies in the field of energy, strategic planning and coordination of national policies in the field of energy in all its ramifications. And in doing so, it's to become a center of gathering and disseminating information on the uh, developments in the implementation of national policies. It makes recommendations for the exploitation of new energy resources. Uh, it monitors the performance of the energy sector uh, as well as liaises with international energy organizations for the benefit of the, uh, of the nation. It also involves in uh, training and manpower development within the energy uh, sector, among other things. Now, once immediately it got operationalized, uh, particularly with the uh, primary mandate of strategic planning and coordination of national policies on energy, you aware that even before the establishment of the Energy Commission, there have been energy is uh, that is the energy sector is broad. We have the oil and gas sector that had been there a long time ago before 1989. Uh, the, the electricity sector was also a very prominent uh, 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 subsector. So it needed all these all all these subsectors had 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 policies, but we never had a single national energy policy from which scholars, investors, uh, development partners can actually lay hand on and see which direction is government moving 
in the development of his ener- of 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 of, of, uh, of his energy resources. So stakeholders were brought up, were brought in, and uh, a draft was made of the national energy policy then, and uh, that was in 1993. Started in 1993, and ten years later, in 2003, the Federal Executive Council approved the national energy uh, policy, which is an omnibus policy document. Uh, both involving oil and gas, electricity, uh, renewables, nuclear energy, uh, the financing, you know, gender issues, all sorts of all sorts of things that are connected because you know energy is a multifaceted uh, field, uh, environment, all these were involved, uh, were all in the national uh, energy uh, national energy policy. So I think that was the, the um, a milestone. Uh, uh, a milestone uh, output uh, for the establishment of the uh, of the energy energy commission. Now it went further to produce the uh, master plan. Out of a policy, you make out a, a master plan, and to make out a master plan is that you must tell the nation where you want to go to, you know, based on the policies, particularly associating it with numbers, targets, timelines, and so it lays with International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, which has one of the best energy planning division. Uh, it came to develop the skills uh, using well, using models to tell us how far we need to go. Uh, a typical output is, for instance, the work we did with the national uh, with the International Atomic Energy Agency had shown us that by 2030 we needed nothing less than 100 gigawatts of electric of electric, electric generation capacity. If with our population growth high population, uh, the level of industrialization we want to go into, uh, and et cetera, and et cetera. But however, we know where we are at the moment. There's a lot, I mean, uh, there's a big gap. We also evolve uh, demand on the, on the petroleum products, uh, which becomes a guide to number of refineries we need to have and, therefore, and for exports. And even in our demand, we discover that really, we even needed to import electricity needed to import electricity in the long run in order to support uh, the demand. And uh, that is why we believe that the uh, ECOWAS network would... Go ahead. That is, the ECOWAS network uh, is uh, really very, very important in moving electricity from one part of the region to another. And in fact, we could even import electricity uh, even from Central Africa, where you have very huge renewable energy sources, that is the large dams there. Uh, and one very important uh, m- uh, thing that I think Energy Commission has done is that we're happy at the moment that renewables has now become very, very uh, pro- prominent, not only because of climate change, not because of environmental things, but particularly we started this for the purpose of energy security in diversifying uh, the energy mix of the, uh, of the country because it's in line with the law that we must make recommendations for energy uh, for new energy sources. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Engineer uh, Jideri Bala. We will return to you uh, against the background of what you have said so that we drill further uh, into what has happened, say, in the last five years, what you, the Buhari administration inherited, and then what uh, the uh, achievements have been uh, since 2015. But let's uh, go back to, our, uh, to Lagos. Uh, we understand. Uh, that uh, we are unable to get in via Skype now, uh, Kiran. That's that looks like a major challenge. Uh, yes, if we, uh, that's uh, the Director General of the Nigeria Natural Medicine Development Agency. Okay, well, we understand it's back now. Uh, DG uh, Nigeria Natural Medicine Development Agency. Uh, that's uh, Samuel Ogene, a tattoo via. Those who want to make it impossible for you to be on Good Morning Nigeria today, they will fail. So. Uh, we know that the gods uh, are on your side and are also on our side this morning. But uh, tell us something. I mean, the Honorable Minister was indicating some new advances in terms of research uh, in the health sector, and yours is from the, the natural medical perspective. Exactly what has been happening in that subsector? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I want to, first of all, um, use this opportunity to thank uh, the Honorable Minister for a better appreciation of the potentials and the relevance of the 
traditional medicine knowledge associated about resources. Um, before now, as she came in, has given us a lot of support and encouragement. Actually, we, as at, um, one of the challenges we had before 2015 was uh, the poor funding and um, uh, late release of funds that we, we could not assess. Actually, by 2015, when it came, we had a zero capital. Uh, but um, it felt that that was not good enough for, for an important sector like the natural medicine or traditional medicine sector. Uh, it has um, supported us and it has encouraged us. We, like you mentioned, we had a lot of, um, based on our mandate, we have a lot of uh, activities because of those support in terms of R&D. And I also want to mention here that uh, the agency was established in 1997 by ministerial order. And uh, we'll be trying to have the legal instrument that formally establish it. Uh, it was uh, by, the, by the support of the Honorable Minister, we were able to move it through FEC and uh, eventually we'll have the act establishing the agency signed into law by Mr. President on the 24th of June, 2019. So that is just last year, So, which is a big uh, um, achievement for, for the agency. And like I mentioned, because of the support and some increased uh, funding for the agency, we've um, uh, tried to improve on the R and D infrastructures that we require to do serious uh, research and development. And um, we've been able to develop. We had a smaller lab, but we've been able to develop or construct a bigger lab. We call it a complex lab that will soon be finished. And uh, who will do better things. But in terms of R&D, we've been able to come up with some very important uh, products that will help the nation and individuals that, that will need them. We have we've, uh, looked at malaria as, as, as a, a, pro, uh, a problem, and in line with the malaria education program of the country, we've uh, been able to develop an indoor herbal spray that you can spray in the house and um, you'll be able to stay there and it will uh, uh, help eliminate your, the mosquito. We've done all the necessary laboratory tests and the field tests and uh, we are pre um, preparing it. Actually, we submitted it to NAVDAC for, for NAVDAC listing. We've also done um, Developed a herbal product, it's a tea for the money for the control of blood sugar for diabetes. That one is a tea, um, and uh, we have gotten a blacklisting for that, ready for commercialization. We've also developed a product for the management of malaria. It's also in, term, in the form of tea. The tea also has been uh, has been listed by NABDAC. The good thing about that thing is that it, it reduces the parasitemia, it also reduces the fever that is associated with the malaria, and it also increases the the, uh, the ability to, the, normally the patients that suffer from malaria find it difficult to eat. So uh, uh, this particular product increases the appetite of the, of the patient. Uh, it also listed it, and we're also moving it through NOTAB for possible patents and uh, then from there to commercialization. Like what when the minister mentioned, we have a candidate product for management of cancer, both uh, breast cancer and, uh, and prostate cancer. We'll be, we'll concluded all the uh, quality assurance, the safety and the stability of that particular product. Actually, we've been able to some Individuals that know that we have that those that particular those products have come for us to give them the products after signing a concept note for us. We did it as a kind of a temporary preparation for them, and uh, we've uh, had very very encouraging reports. Some of them that were uh, on chemotherapy, 
and they uh, dropped their hair has been dropped and they are they have the pains and uh, other symptoms of uh, cancer they've been able to uh, the hair has been restored their energy restored there are every other parameter that uh, uh, we need to check has been checked but we are still working on it and um, by the time we finish we'll be able to proudly present it to the country. We also have products for uh, erectile dysfunction and that increases libido. That one, a lot of um, uh, men, and we know the challenges of erectile dysfunction and the loss of libido and what the impact it has on the family. So that product is also almost getting ready. Um, apart from human... Uh, related uh, illness and all that. We looked at also at the livestock challenges that we have, especially the poultry industry that a lot of uh, people are involved in. And also from our research, we realized that many of the drugs that they use in managing business are also imported. So we decided to at least get a product in that line. We have um, a broader growth promoter to increase the egg production. We also have an anti hermetic size to the one the the that's one of the greater challenges and what one anti consider is one of the major diseases that affect the uh, poultry industry and um, from those who, who, uh, who have helped us to apply them in their farms have also given us a very encouraging um, report. All these products will be exhibited at the National uh, Science and Technology Expo, and uh, the response at that expo was also very encouraging. Uh, other achievements we've made during this, between the, especially in, with regards to the COVID-19 response, um, you realize that One of the requirements, uh, one of the products that is required to prevent, to help assist people to prevent this uh, COVID-19 is herbal sanitizer. And at a point, the herbal sanitizer became a bit scarce and very expensive. And most of the raw materials for produce, developing the standard ones, carbona, isopropyl alcohol, and all that, are imported. And they are also becoming very scarce. But meanwhile, we realized a lot of medicinal and aromatic plants that have bacteriostatic, bactericidal activities. So we decided to formulate a 100% herbal hand sanitizer, which we also exhibited at the last um, uh, expo. And uh, we are happy that Mr. President passed through our stand and he saw them and actually congratulated us for taking that initiative. As of today, we've also concluded our um, herbal remedy for the management of the symptoms of this COVID-19. If you realize that most cases, the severity of this COVID-19 clinical variant is about five, from, from asymptomatic to mild to moderate. Uh, this is, I, I think that uh, if you are able to, to take care of the symptoms like fever, cough, shortness of breath, um, pains, diarrhea, there are established medicinal plants in this country that have scientific that they have both, apart from they have the capacity to man to reduce fever, to manage cough, to open up the airways, and also to uh, take care of. They also have antiviral and antibacterial properties. So that by the time people in that category that are not have gone down to the level of uh, severe and critical that requires ventilators and uh, other oxygen support can use this this product. We've not been able to, we've not been making noise about it because we felt it is proper. We do all the right things, all the necessary analysis before we can come into the open to measure. But I just want to let uh, our, our Nigerians know that um, 
These are some of the efforts that the, my agency, Nigerian Natural Medicine Development Agency, has done in the area of uh, um, uh, looking for solution for the treatment prevention of uh, the COVID-19. We, as an agency, we, we, we also know that the traditional medicine knowledge is more located at the grassroots level. And with the support of our Honorable Minister, he graciously approved our establishment of six zonal zona centers for the agencies. Uh, all right, uh, we're going to come back to you uh, to perhaps explain some of the uh, issues concerning commercialization of uh, all the itemized uh, medications that uh, you've been able to put together uh, the agency uh, using uh, herbs, which of course are made from plants that are available to Nigeria. We also like to know, um, you know, in the course of this program, the type of uh, herbal plants that we have in Nigeria, and of course uh, the efficacious nature of, of these uh, herbal uh, plants and how you've been able to uh, plan for commercialization of what you have already done. We, we thank you. And I uh, back to our studio here in Abuja to get to Honorable Minister. Uh, Honorable Minister, sir, Nigerians in the informal sector have also participated actively in the expo. And you could see that, that there are many uh, individuals who are not in any organization, who are individuals that uh, come up with uh, something that are uh, so uh, uh, intriguing. For instance, the, the man that uh, produced uh, the wooden car you know, with which he came into the arena two years ago, he's from Mina. He's just a high school uh, lever, you know, and uh, he doesn't have any, he doesn't work in any organization, but he was able to do that. Um, such persons, uh, what is uh, the ministry doing uh, to see how they can be incorporated and encouraged, you know, to advance uh, what, uh, the technology that they have already? Uh, what, what are we doing in that connection? Well, no, we, <clears throat> I really thank you for raising this, uh, this point. It's very, very important. And uh, we are particularly interested uh, in the contributions to knowledge in science and technology from the informal sector. And we have uh, done a lot to encourage, uh, encourage them. Quite often we link them up, uh, depending on the type of uh, work that uh, they have done, we link them up to the appropriate uh, agency because we believe that uh, such an agency will help them to fine tune, you know, uh, the work they've already started uh, to make it possible uh, for them to advance such work, you know, to the level where uh, they can be commercialized. Because uh, we believe very strongly that if uh, those in the informal sector can commercialize their research findings, start making money from those, you know, the way Bill Gates. Uh, this is a man who was in the university, he got an idea, he came out of university and today or for a very long time he was the richest person. So we think that those in the informal sector, if we can encourage them, assist them, uh, we uh, give grants to them. We have a program that uh, we, we have been religiously, since I became minister, we've been making money available no matter how much we have, we uh, give to them. Uh, with this, if they can get products that they can make money from, then it will encourage more people to, uh, you know, start using the ideas, converting them into products, which will help our economy and so on. But before I conclude on this, I would like to mention something about the Energy Commission of Nigeria. Uh, the uh, DG is important that he lets you know that uh, determining NNPC determining the crude oil deposits in the uh, in the Bauchi Gombe uh, axis, the belt, you know, that, uh, you know, belt was as a result of the work that one of the research centers, they have uh, six research centers uh, attached to universities uh, within the country, the work that they did. So, which is a very important thing. And uh, it's important for the nation to know, you know, that, you know, that because it was a major find. You know, that oil that was located between Gombe and uh, is the research that was done in uh, Taf uh, uh, Tafabelewa University in our own, you know, which is very important, yes. Uh, Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. We will take a short break now. When we return, we'll bring in the uh, DG of uh, Energy Commission of Nigeria to speak more 
on the activities of, uh, of that agency. Let's go on a short break. Nigerians, coronavirus is dangerous. It can kill. When you see this sign, high fever, cough, shortness of breath, drowsiness, pneumonia, don't panic, don't hide, don't embark in self-medication. Promptly visit the nearest medical facility. Report all cases to the nearest hospital. Prevention is key. Avoid contact with infected persons. Avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Wash your hands regularly. Use hand sanitizers. Your life is precious. Stay alive. Live long, live right. This message is sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture and the Nigerian Film Corporation. Nigerian Film Corporation, powering possibility. As a strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19, a corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number 0800 -2255 This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus. But we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Let's bring in now the Director General of the Energy Commission of Nigeria, that's uh, Engineer Jidere Bala. Engineer Jidere, I, I mean, against the background of your history as an agency and then your mandate, tell us what are those practical things that Nigerians can relate to beyond laying the policy framework and roadmap, you know, for the energy mix of the country. What are those, as I said, the touchables and seeables? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kingsley. As the Honorable Minister did mention, uh, uh, Energy Commission, in pursuit of his mandate, had established six energy research centers that are university-based, one in each of the six geopolitical zones. And uh, uh, the one in the Northeast, that is the National Center for Petroleum Research and Development, located at the Abu Bakr Tafa Walewa University, uh, has a mandate for the research and development on hydrocarbons and any other energy resources from underground, like geothermal energy. And in, uh, since inception, uh, when it was established, you may recall that some IOCs had begun some work in the uh, northern Benue Trop and uh, they ended it up. But with the little that was obtained, the center uh, did some analysis and uh, with some research work in collaboration with some uh, work done in, in, in some Malaysian universities, came up with a model that indicated that uh, there are potentials uh, within the northern uh, Benue Trough to actually get commercial source of uh, uh, crude oil. And uh, subsequently, in liaison with the uh, NMPC uh, Frontier Exploration Agency, they were able to go deeper, and then that is the find that they have uh, gotten. So the collaboration between the center and the NMPC actually contributed to what we now have as the Colmani II uh, oil uh, oil finds. The other centers, uh, we have the Sokoto Energy Research Center and uh, the 
National Center for Energy Research and Development based at the University of Nigeria and Suka. They are the two oldest research centers that we have. And these are basically uh, on renew solar and other renewable energy. And a lot of the outputs have been found. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are very happy to, 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 to say that the level of development within the renewable energy sector now in the country is because of the work done at, at uh, Suka and Sokoto Energy Research Centers of the Energy Commission of Nigeria. Is, is the commission the outputs, strictly a research agency or uh, it does more beyond research? I'm asking this because when you're talking about the energy mix of which renewable energy is very critical, I mean, a long while ago, it was yeah. established that the northwestern part of the country, say Katsina, uh, is very valuable for wind, wind yes. energy. And I think yes. the Yaradwa administration started something in Katsina. Ibadan is also supposed to be very good for that. but. We are not seeing this available. I mean, everywhere is still generator, generator. So that's why I'm asking this in terms of the next steps so that it becomes valuable for the user. Well, the, 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 I think the, the commission is, is both. Okay. I mean, you can't, you have to make, you have to advise government, make recommendations based on research findings, even policy, policy, uh, that is, policy direction can be informed through research and development. I mean, research must not only be seen as, you know, uh, a young man or a, uh, or a person in a white jacket in a lab, you know, mixing chemicals or, or turning a lathe uh, or, 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 you know, or, or doing the work on friction or, so, or something of that nature. He, you hear journalists do a lot of research uh, before you come out with a pro, with a, with a, with, with, uh, with a program. So research, research is a very encompassing type of a thing. And an institution like ours uh, uh, does research and also does planning. Of course, you can't plan without research. You can't have information to plan without, uh, uh, without research. So it's, 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 it's an institution that is knowledge-based. Just like the minister, I think, since he came, he has been preaching about knowledge-based economy. And uh, uh, just like he said, the entire national economy is science and technology. Is it transportation? Is it uh, the, the energy sector? Uh, is it the agricultural sector? Is it the health sector? Science and tech is everywhere. Now, let me just make mention okay. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the physical things that, he, uh, that the Energy Commission has done. In these research centers, we've been able to, to have uh, research, in, particularly in solar energy, uh, the devices promoting renewables. Solar PVs, solar PV technology, the first to be, to be promoted. I think the, the first solar water heater was established in 1988 at, in NIPS by the Sokoto Energy Research Center, providing clean water for drinking and sanitation to staff in the uh, NIPS, National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies in, in JOS. In rural communities, I think right from, from 2015 to now, I think we've installed over 300 solar-driven water boreholes in rural communities. And you know what it is if you are from a rural community where you drink water from the, uh, f from the stream, to have clean water uh, to drink and clean water for sanitation. It, it affects health, it affects uh, human development. Uh, we've also done a lot of uh, solar street lights in rural communities and it improved uh, security, especially at, at this time where insecurity is a major thing. Uh, it also in, uh, enhanced social interaction amongst the rural communities in, at, at, at night. I mean, you install this and you just find out how, how people jubilate. Their social life changes. The economic life also improves. Uh, we installed quite a number of mini-grids in the rural health centers. Uh, it has improved the health delivery in the rural centers. Just to mention a few. Uh, I know we've, between 2015 and now we've installed over 10,000 solar street lights. We've installed over 300 uh, solar water uh, so solar water boreholes. Now we have other research outputs: solar water heaters that are installed in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, hospitals and rural clinics. I'm sure we have one now at the Sokoto University Teaching Hospital, installed by the Sokoto Energy Research Center, and one in the Teaching Hospital too in Inogu, installed by. Uh, in Suka, we have solar dryers, crop dryers. We have solar PV-driven irrigation systems that have been developed. Biogas digesters. Uh, 
improved fuel wood stoves that are now being distributed in order to minimize the uh, deforestation and, uh, and, and mitigate climate change. Uh, so we, we, we've, we've, we've done a lot of these outputs, uh, research, uh, research outputs. Yeah, so in, interestingly, you know, I, I was going to interject to, to ask you to go to the specifics, you know, what you have just done, you know, for, for Nigerians to appreciate and understand yes. that you have been doing some things physical, things that are supporting life, solving sorry, problems, and, 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 and what have you. Um, at, at this point, let's go back to Lagos, where we have a, 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 a tattoo here. Kyrian, uh, I, I just wonder, I'm sorry to interject. Mm -hmm. Just before we go back to Lagos, mm. I wanted the Honorable Minister to clear something on the basis of what our guests in Lagos had earlier said, because he was talking about their research findings. Mm. Uh, we've also had the benefit here of NIPRID, which is the Pharmaceutical Research Development uh, Agency. Yeah. Now, we understand that that agency has moved from Science and Tech to, to Ministry Health. of Health. So, again, on the basis of that Science, Tech and Innovation Council, what is the harmony amongst all of these research agencies? Yeah, yeah. What is the collaboration, for instance, between what the Natural Medicine Agency is doing, as our guest in Lagos has said, and what NAPRID on its own is doing? Mm -hmm. What is the collaboration between these ones and the agricultural research institutes? And what are, are people just still operating in silos? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We, we're not operating in silos. I, indeed, uh, it, it's important I make this point uh, you know, to the nation. The, the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology came into existence by an act of parliament in 1980. And it, it was very clear we have the mandate to do research and innovation in the country. That's our mandate. And at that time, all the research institutes and agencies that you now have, they were under the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology. But it so happened that over time, there was a time that the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology was merged with the Ministry of Education. There was also a time it was merged with Ministry of Industry. And there was a time it was scraped completely. I'm sure you remember all these things. And then finally it was reconstituted. And it was reconstituted during a military government. And you know, the man who was the Minister of Science and was a civilian. So there was no way he could get the agencies that were you know, under major generals or brigadiers and all that. You know, so that's why we, you have uh, these agencies in so many ministries now. You know, but before, all these agencies were, you know, in one ministry. And, uh, you know, uh, it, for efficiency, if you don't want to duplicate uh, research efforts and so on, you need to, you know, bring these things uh, together. That is the essence. You know, if you have any nation that has a Ministry of Science and Technology, naturally, we put all the research institutes and agencies in one place. So that, because when I became minister, the first thing I did was to make sure that there was no duplication within the 17 agencies, because 17 is still a big number. So I, I made sure, because when you have limited resources, you must make sure that you apply every COBO in the wisest possible manner. And so that is that. But within the council, you see, the council has Mr. President as chairman and also has 16 ministers. 16 ministers is minus the first council. There is no other council that has, you know, that type of uh, number. You know, we also it has Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. He has uh, Asima and all that and so on. So you, the council brings everybody together. So you shouldn't worry. You know, whether you are in health or you are in agriculture or uh, in environment or in science and technology, you know, you are there. And they also, the council is not just for federal, you know, we're interested in the research and innovation in Nigeria. That is why it's important that, you know, for example, when we do all our programs, we involve uh, subnational government, we involve the state, we bring them together because, you see, the development of the nation. It cannot just be left for the federal government. No, it can't. It won't work. You know, you must go to all levels. Uh -huh. And uh, so that council, you know, is responsible for research in Nigeria. And if the, you know, once we have a research fund, that fund will promote research, you know, in all, you know, not only both the universities, 
polytechnics. And when you come to universities, you know, whether it's federal, whether it's state, whether it's um, private, whether it's public, whether it's faith-based, all those don't matter, provided they do research. Now, you go beyond that, even in the industry, because industry must have you know, research uh, centers. Uh, you know, it's very important. Every major industry, and you see, this is the problem, and that's why we are promoting, you know, in Nigeria. We want Nigerian investors to come in, because all these uh, foreign uh, uh, companies, you know, they come here to Nigeria. They make a lot of money, but they do the research in their home countries, mm -hmm. and that is not good for us. You know, they should be doing the research here because there are certain things that are very unique to us, peculiar to us. So this is the issue. So we need industries to do research, and we will promote them, you know, uh, because it's important. You know, every research in Nigeria will help grow our economy. All right, sir. You know, I think the part of the issue here, you know, is that in, the, in, in this country, the you know, investors are not keen into science and technology as they should be. Uh, those that are showing interest are not adequate enough uh, to um, uh, address uh, the, the, the challenges we have in the sector and even to uh, ensure that all the research works that are coming out from the different uh, research agencies you know, are put into use to solve uh, a societal problem. That's, I think, one of the basic issues that, that we have is that sure, until sure. Um, investors begin to you know, you know, come in here, uh, I think we will not go... Uh, and Kirian, sorry, I don't know. Let me just, just very shortly. Mm -hmm. You see, we, 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 uh, uh, NOTAP is one of our agencies, and one of their mandates is to promote uh, protection of intellectual property mm -hmm. through patents. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows in the world that patents, the, the best measure of innovation, Anywhere in the world. Years. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And the, the, in 2015, when I became minister, there were only six patents that passed through NOTAP. But do you know that that number has grown from six to 16 to 50 to 57, 58? So this shows that the uh, in, 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 you know, research and innovation is mm -hmm. making tremendous progress in the country. Mm -hmm. People may not see it, but it's there. Mm -hmm. you know, so <coughs> it is important that this uh, link up is, is done. done. Because yeah. we're not interested in silos. We have broken those silos. Yes. You know, we want the industry, we want the research institute, we want government so, you know, to work together. So there's more synergy now? Oh, yeah, there's there is. Synergy. There is. All right. And again, we've had uh, the NOTAP DG some time ago, about last month. You know, he also uh, expatiated on what you have just uh, mentioned. OK, let's go back to Lagos and uh, get this question to uh, whoever or in a, a taboo here. So you, you uh, enumerated some of the um, uh, items that, that you have uh, in your kitty at the agency and how efficacious that they have been and of course how acceptable it has been uh, when uh, NAVDAC has uh, given you a, a go ahead. But let's think beyond that. Uh, what are we getting with respect to commercialization? I know it's not your responsibility to do that, but what steps have you taken uh, to ensure that the um, uh, necessary agencies are in the know of what you have and could key in into commercializing the tea that you have mentioned, which of course the reason for what you are doing is to ensure that Nigerians benefit from that. So what is the next step you know, after you have uh, done the ones that you have explained to us uh, earlier on? Yeah, well, the next steps, like um, especially for those of them that the two products are that have uh, been uh, not that listed. Um, so, like when we were at the expo, we were, we were a lot of uh, people that came, uh, some of the industrial so the interest in uh, coming to um, discuss with us. But uh, because I'm sure because of the challenges of this uh, COVID-19 and restrictions on movements and all that, um, we've not been able to push it forward. But we are, we are, Confident that um, before this year runs out, uh, one or two uh, interested uh, partners will come and will finalize uh, the discussions on their commercialization. So that is for those uh, products. The other ones I mentioned, they are still undergoing um, standardization processes. And um, once we are true, we also push it through not that listen. Like, I, I want to emphasize one, one, one part. Our policy 
um, as a research institute is to uh, you do the develop your product, you move it to uh, patenting or move it to now blacklisting before um, you do anything about uh, publishing the paper. Because once it goes into public domain, you may not be able to have the, the patent that you desire, which actually most of most investors are interested in. And they cannot pay you royalties and all that. That has also been the emphasis that our honorable minister has um, always given uh, to us. So those are the the issues as regards to commercialization. Then on the issue of I was just wondering, uh, Mr. Ogane Tatuvia, please, very quickly, in line with the question that Kirian asked about commercialization, you talk, for instance, about the type of teas that you have, teas for diabetes and teas for others. When you go to the shops, you find all kinds of labels on all kinds of teas, uh, making claims to some of these things that you have just indicated. So how do we ascertain that which is yours out of the laboratory and indeed already certified by NAVDAC and then the others who are probably just puffs? Well, the, I'm not a regulatory agency. We're a research and development agency. My concern is to bring to the public what I can defend, uh, issues of safety, issues of uh, effectiveness, issues of uh, quality. I'm very germane if you want to do product development. And I want to also emphasize this fact that drug development takes time and it also takes money. It takes time and it takes money. There are processes you must go through, and as a scientist, you must go through before you jump into the public and begin to announce what you've done. Because there are, there are you are supposed, papers, you can develop them, send them for peer review journal discussions and all that. So we, we that is why some of these uh, products will be a bit uh, quiet about them. We want to be sure that anywhere anybody takes it, we will be able to call back. Many people, even those of us, me in particular, that the one for uh, the, the one to control blood sugar. Uh, that is what I try to use in managing myself. The one for malaria. Most of my staff and the other friends, they, they take them and they give us very good uh, information. I mean, very good response. So we are confident of what we are putting out, and we show it. Um, we are, we use, want to use this opportunity to call on uh, any uh, uh, interested um, promoter. All oh, 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 right, uh, uh, Owen. Oh, uh, uh, Kinsley is, is is interested in in some of those products. So if you can get it across, uh, I'm not diabetic, by the way. From what I've said, you know, you, I'm not. <laughs> Make it available to us, it will yes. be very important. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure our viewers there are also interested. Yeah, exactly. yes. But so I know that you are a native doctor from Enugu. Uh, <laughs> uh, Honorable Minister, you know, you, you, you started the expo since 2016, but I want to assure you that NTA has been in the business of doing such expo for the past 25 years or more. And we concentrate on children, high school, primary school. It's been there for years. And uh, we, we, we always expect that uh, your, your ministry will support and collaborate with us in this direction. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a yearly thing. So t this year's own is, uh, has, is, is yet to come. And we're expecting to collaborate with, with the ministry for you to come and see the wonders the younger generation of Nigerians are, 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 are doing. In fact, you will be, be shocked what you're going to see if you attend any of the NTA's, uh, you know, uh, Technology Expo for, for Children. So give us assurance that uh, <laughs> this year's own, that we're going to do that together collaboratively. No, no, I, I really uh, thank you for raising this uh, and uh, I want to commend the NTA for the foresight uh, to uh, encourage our young people. Uh, it's uh, exactly what we believe must be done, you know, because, you know, you catch them young so that when they grow older, uh, they will behave that way. Um, we, we, I, I, am, I, I, you see, I have never had any doubt whatsoever. That's why the greatness of the nation for me is a certainty. Uh, it's just a matter of time, you know, so long as we do what is right. Uh, because you need to see what our people, you visit uh, schools, you see what 
you know, our people can uh, produce. produce yeah. So I, I feel very happy. I'm so proud. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people know that uh, Nigerians are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, so all we are trying to do now is just to redirect our thinking so that let us see that, uh, look, if you employ science, technology, and innovation, we can attain this greatness that Nigeria wants faster. So uh, we want to give you assurance that if you invite us in good enough time, uh, you know, we will attend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kira, that's that's uh, heartwarming. We, we are unable to take the tweets now because we're uh, getting pressed for time. I, I was just uh, Engineer Bala of uh, Energy Commission of Nigeria. I'm sure this is a question that you probably will be bombarded with from time to time. Look, we have abundance of sunshine in the country. In the coastal areas, you have abundance of wind. And yet, these are sources we are unable to harness, uh, despite the findings that your institute or your agency has come up with. What is the missing link? How can we kick into this? Very briefly. Uh, well, to convert these resources, to convert these energy resources into final energies, in most cases, what's in wind and the solar primarily is to electricity as the final energy. You need investments. You need investments. And I think technologies are already there. Solar PV technology is, is proven, is becoming cheaper year in, year out, more so driven now by climate change. A lot of funds are available, research is going on. The same thing with wind. In fact, wind is even cheaper now, of, of, uh, especially offshore. Uh, so uh, who, who, who should have this investment, private or public? Private, because the energy sector is more or less, for, for instance, the electricity sector is uh, li li liberalized. No, no, sorry, yes. let, me, let me come in here. But then, the, the, there is the need, sorry, DG, there is the need for us to have solar cells produced here in Nigeria. Yes. Because if, if we produce solar cells in Nigeria, we are going to reduce the cost you know, of these solar panels. There's supposed to be one at Karashi here near Abuja. No, no, that is the solar panel. But the major component, 60% of is the cell. Yeah, so and then that cell, you get it from ordinary sand. You know, from the sand, you sand produce silicon. Yeah. We have it everywhere. Then you produce silicon. Now, from the silicon, you get the solar cell. And then from the silicon, you do, there are so many other things you are going to produce for. That, that will know. be your challenge. Yeah, yeah it's a challenge. You know, it's what, that, that, that's, that's what we need. You know, we need it as a nation. Okay. Uh, because look at this Silicon Valley in America. That's yes. how that's the Silicon Valley is. Honorable Minister, we'd like to thank you. You know, we have actually come to the end. We've exhausted our time. Uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, uh, you were able to be here with us this morning on Guma Nigeria. Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Boney, it's been a pleasure. Uh, talking to you this morning on Good Morning uh, Show. Um, Dr. Mohamed Lawa Buga, uh, sorry, uh, Engineer Eli Jidere Bala, we also like to thank you uh, for coming. That's the DG of the Energy Commission. It's, it's a pleasure having you here this morning. Professor. Uh, professor, rather. Yeah, well, I, I called him a professor earlier on, and uh, my colleague said he's an engineer. No, he's both. Both. Engineer professor. Yeah. All right. Then via uh, Skype, we had the Samuel Ogene Tatuvia. We thank you for being part of our show this morning. Thank you indeed uh, for coming. All right. So that does it for us today. Good morning, Nigeria. We appreciate your being with us. We are back tomorrow, same time as always, 7 o'clock in the morning. Until then, stay safe and be well. I'm King.